thing Mr. Shem should do, uh, all he did was eat, sleep, and poop. So, practice. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, my objection. <laughs> Why do we talk about past or future? Yeah, life? right. What's the point? I mean, damn it. If we're just the wind that moves the earth, no. If we're just as <coughs> Dalai Lama's translator says, a flame that passes from one candle. To right, another. right. So what's the answer? Because you you got to get it. You you got to get this part. First of all, Master Shantideva is going, hey, don't be stupid. I'm going to use your argument against you. I'm going to use all this logic for you. But then that's a really good objection. Just like, you know, the first objection that pops to his argument, treat everybody like yourself, was like, I don't feel their pain. It's like, great, I got you. Good. And then he went through explaining why you don't feel your future pain and so on. It's just proving to us that the way we think we are experiencing the world, even though we inherited it by popping into this realm in this way, it is flexible. Yeah? It is produced by our karma. And therefore, it's moldable. It's changeable. So... The view is changeable. So why do we then do all this work in past, in, in, in karma? Why do we try and take care of our future selves and the rest? What's the answer? It's the way we see it right now. It functions that way. It actually works that way. It actually gives you a result. And it's not self-existent. It actually... Your reality that you call very solid reality, even though you can't even hold it to its to your own standards of solid reality, because causation in this realm, the way we think of causation, isn't causation. Not really. It's nominal causation. All the work that we do in this world, the nominal work, trying to look out for myself, all of it breaks down. So it's not the real cause. It's not the real solution. It's not really functional. But we think this reality is solid, and that's a mistake. <laughs> that's a mistake. We think this fakeness, the thing he's called Zumba, is real. And yet it appeared because of causes and conditions, karma. Yeah? <coughs> Past and future experiences. And for that, it functions. But because we misapprehend how it functions, see, we think it functions by doing this stuff. I'm going to give you a dollar and you're going to use a dollar to be happy with a dollar. Nothing to do with a dollar. The dollar is just the thing that allows me to have an imprint in my mind for a, for a moment of generosity that must ripen into the results of generosity. There's a deep undercurrent of the river of our continuum. <coughs> it functions. It produced this reality, almost good, right? This reality, almost solid. <laughs> almost uh, wonderful, but it breaks down, it's broken. And it's broken because we misapprehend what made it and how it functions. So the answer is, when you do get everything you want by treating everybody as equal or more, it is also a fake that functions. It's also a fake that functions as your reality that you call real. It's just that because you're operating at the DNA level of causality, it's just not going to break apart like this breaks apart. <laughs> the corpse you're building your 401k for might thank you for a little while, but at some point all these corpses will have things that haven't finished yet. All of them. You know, all, all of our planning and all of our taking care of, of our future self, some people don't make it to 60. And they plan for a nice retirement. Some people don't make it to 40. And they plan for a nice 45th birthday. You know, some people don't make it. We all don't make it to that future self. So <laughs> and so it, it gets, this is where it gets, mm, yeah, we're going beyond what we came into this realm understanding and that's why it feels like my head is going to explode and you'll get how it gets deeper in the next so let, let's go are you ready let, um, actually he's got one more argument to say treating myself and others doesn't make sense look the, the bottom line of, of this treating others exactly like you would treat yourself is that you can have your cake and eat it too. Taking care of yourself only in despite others produces the broken realm. 
So you might have some nominal happinesses and then they disappear and you're continuously in this cycle. If you really understand, if, to, if you really get <coughs> causality in the sense that your world is a projection of your imprints in your stream of consciousness, then what would be the natural result, so if, if that's true, which you have to get used to, what would be the result of treating every single thing in your world as beautiful and perfect and giving it an abundant and blah, you creating goodness in your entire world, everybody without exception, you treat as best. What would be the karmic result of that? It would become that. You would experience everything as best towards you. <coughs> you know? And but that's not why you do it. See, a bodhisattva doesn't sit there expecting a result. We'll cover that in a sec. So let's go to the next, the last argument. I love this one, and I hope you get it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> contemplation number... Oh, sorry, I'm going to go back to my <coughs> very famous TEDx talk that I did. Um, <coughs> <coughs> remember that I said in, in the TED, for those that watched it, right, and those that didn't, I said somewhere in there that the biggest thing that got me to try the experiment is the monk said, don't take my word for it, try it. And for my personality, that kind of, I don't know what it's called in English, in Spanish it's desafío. What's that? A desafío. A, like a challenge, like a, a dare. dare. It's like a dare. Yeah? It was like, ugh, why did he have to say that now? I have to do the experiment. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> that's what got me. It wasn't like I was a virtuous person or anything. It was more like a pride thing, you know? And so, <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> and, and this is what uh, this Master Shanti Dev was getting frustrated at this point, going, just try it. But me telling you all these reasons is not going to prove it to you. You try it on the subway. But try it earnestly, try it deeply, and try it properly. No excuses. Try it. And then you see whether your world gets better, because normally it'll get better, as well as ultimately. And then he gives this awesome argument, which I love. Let's go. 1,300 years ago. The power of habit. By accustoming yourself to the idea, you have learned to think of a few drops of semen and blood that belong to other people as being yourself, even though there's no such thing at all. Why then do you say you cannot think of the bodies of other people as being yourself as well? There isn't any difficulty in deciding that the bodies of others are your body, your own body too. I think that's stunning. Your mom's eggs, your dad's sperms, two cells from your parents, not your body, it's their body, right? Mm. Their cells. They multiply, create an entity. You inhabit it, you call it yours. Why not their parents' eggs and sperms? Why, I mean, if you're going to choose and flip and choose like that, why don't choose someone else's egg and sperm and call it your own? I love that argument. It's like, we are so habituated to say, well, I learned this way, that this is me. I, this is, I know this is me, because I, I know this. Why do you know it? It's just someone else's sperm and egg. You are someone else's sperm and egg. Why can't you just extend your identity from this sperm and egg that's an overgrown DNA collection to that overgrown DNA collection? Why not that? Especially if it's going to be deeply more functional than the broken realm we're in. Really? Why not theirs? Why not? It's just DNA multiplying. Why not just say, oh, it's not just this, it's that. So he's gone through this and that concludes the, the first of the two methods, the one that says treat yourself and others exactly the same. And now we begin a slight variation calling exchanging yourself for others, dash a little bit more radical, prioritizing, prioritizing others over yourself. This is a faster track. This is a stronger impression. This is deeply more against our habit. The bottom line argument here is, Hector is one. 
the rest of humanity is 7 billion. 1 versus 7 billion. Who should go first? <laughs> yeah? Let's say Hector or 7 billion. Who should I save? 7 billion. Duh! Yeah? So, mm -hmm. but it seems like don't give me objections. Uh, Let Master Shantideva answer your objections, cook it, and then next week we can argue. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> and that's called Dakshin Jewa. Dakshin Jewa. So, Dak means me, sh uh, Shen means others, and Jewa means exchange. So, seven, bi seven billion versus, and that's just the humans. Let's talk about all the other sentients, all the bugs that want to eat, all the elephants that want to. What elephant sounds? Ooh. Moo, oh, <laughs> all the elephants that want to moo. They trumpet. They trumpet. They meow. <laughs> they purr too. Okay. Nicolas. Nicolas, Nicolaus. Hector, mine's not, it's not an objection. It's just that yesterday I was thinking about it was starting to rain and I bought an umbrella. And, I, and then I saw someone walking without an umbrella and I thought, oh, I could give them mine and then they wouldn't be wet. But then I would be wet, but I would be helping them. But then I'd be miserable. Good, 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 good. I would good. be good to others because I would be wet. Yeah. Isn't it better if I just keep my umbrella? Yeah. I can't take care of everyone. Good. That was, I was one, I good. didn't, what's the answer? That's the answer. Seven <laughs> billion umbrellas. No, no, but this is the very real thing. You take this practice seriously, you're going to get serious results. You'll also get wet sometimes, yeah? Especially if it's raining. <laughs> You'll also, you know, as soon as you start taking care of one other person, your bank account drops in half. Mine's at zero already, right? So half of zero is zero. We're yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, take that, put it aside until I get to the end of class. Okay, yeah? okay. I am going to answer it, okay. and I'm going to answer it seriously, but you also have to hold the tension to break the habit of taking care of me only, or me first, or me priority. Yeah? yeah, and the answer will be like lifting the weights. Okay, that will be the answer. Okay. You're you're prohibited to do anything beyond your capacity, but you're also encouraged and highly encouraged to stretch your capacity. Okay, so both keep riding the edge until you expand that border. Let's go to number twenty-two. The source the, the, of all happiness. The last line of the twenty-one. You want the last line? Did you not do the last line, John? No, no, I didn't. Oh. Get on with it. Okay. Uh, come to understand that for myself it's wrong, but for all others an ocean of fine qualities. Discard completely your habit of caring for yourself and learn to take on every other being. When you think of your hands and such, you do consider them all a part of your body. So why then don't you consider every creature that has a body as being one of the parts of the body of all living kind? Because you've gotten used to think, because you've gotten used to it, you're able to think it's mine of this body, which actually has no self. Why do you say then you could never learn to think of others as me if you got used to it? If you could then, if you could, then you would never feel that it was strange, nor conceited, when you worked for others. You don't expect congratulations from yourself whenever you eat your dinner for yourself. <laughs> For that reason, <laughs> you must get used to a state of mind where you protect all beings, and, and to thoughts of compassion as well, protecting them just the same way you protect yourself, even from the very least unkind word. Thank you. Okay. I'll go quick on this one. Okay? But there, there were three readings there. Um, the first part says, come to understand that for myself it's wrong, but for all others, an ocean of infinite qualities. He's talking about cherishing there. That part needs an explanation. That for me it's wrong. Cherish myself over others. For me it's wrong because it will produce selfishness, will just reduce your abundance. And for others it's an ocean of infinite qualities. The reason he uses a metaphor of oceans is because... Buddhism came from ancient India, with stories of the ocean, in Tibet, how many oceans are there, 
I've never seen an ocean. They've got this idea that all the gems in the universe come from the bottom of the ocean and they're lying all over the beaches, so they think that the infinite goodness is coming out of the well, ocean. Tibet actually, I don't want to rant on this, but in, in Pangaea time, Tibet was split in two and both sides of it were bordering the ocean. Oh, really? That's yeah. awesome. That's where all this, the sea um, creature Our rocks up. that we have. That's true. Thank you. Um, uh, so, but he says, when you get to develop this method of prioritizing others and you actually begin to habituate seeing others as you, you won't expect congratulations when you're doing the goodnesses of giving umbrellas away. Yeah? You won't see it as a suffering either. And then he uses that awesome metaphor of saying, when you go to McDonald's and you get fries, you don't see your hand bringing fries to the mouth. You go, oh, thank you very much, hands. That's very nice. Thank you. You don't thank yourself continuously for feed because you've just called yourself all of this. Unless you're Rachel. Can I do that? I don't know. Oh, you did? You thank your previous self. I didn't thank your previous self. Oh, well, I'll, I'll write Master Shantideva. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I'm feeling, but, but he'll you know, write you back. Huh? Yeah, he'll write you back. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the idea is that you begin to <laughs> elevate your and stretch and manage to weightlift more and more and more by expanding this idea or this boundary of where myself is. You will go to Nepal and you will look after the kids and it won't be a hassle. It won't be a problem to go and hang out with them because all of a sudden you're with them and you're not sitting there going, be nice to me. Why don't you appreciate the goodness I'm doing to you? I mean, to be honest, at the beginning, I think we did. I think we went there. I'm a good bodhisattva. I'm doing goodness. Why are you grateful? <laughs> it's such a stupid thing. Once you develop it, you realize there is no difference between their happiness and my happiness. In fact, the more happy they are, the more happy you are. Joyful. I am me. I am them. Mm -hmm. So then you don't sit there and say, expect congratulations. It also prevents conceit, being conceited, right? I know we're late. Let's do 25, 26. Then we're nearly home. Mm -hmm. Which is the enemy of the body. Because of your attachment for your body, you feel great feelings of fear for little frightening things. <laughs> Since this body then is a source of terror, who then wouldn't despise it like they would some hated enemy? We spend our days to find the technique of curing those illnesses of the body, hunger and thirst and the rest. To do so, we slaughter birds and fish and wild beasts of the forest, too. We lay in wait at crossroads. For it, for profit, and to win the honor others give us, we would even kill our parents, stealing also things belonging to the triple jewel, passing on to burn for it in hell of endless torment. What wise man could ever then desire this body, care for it, and make onto it offerings. Who is it that wouldn't see the body as the enemy? Who then not disdain it? Cool. So he's talking about umbrellas. <laughs> he's going, but my body might get wet if I give an umbrella to someone else. Yeah. You know? And that, that is a habit too. Yeah? And that's a reasonable habit, okay? That's a reasonable assumption. My body might get wet. Something might be happening to me. I can't take care of everybody. I'm going to completely be broken down and blah, 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 blah. And when you get to the core of it, most of the time he's saying it's to protect this thing. This thing shouldn't get wet. This thing shouldn't get hungry. This thing, we do all sorts of bizarre things to prevent this thing from being threatened or hurt, the body. That will discard, that will get rid of this thing that we must necessarily put in the ground and burn <coughs> when it's done. We do we slaughter animals we, we, to feed it. We do all sorts of bizarre things 
on this planet to try and keep this thing healthy. When you're in a forest and you see a snake, you're gonna bash the head out of that snake because it might just bite your body, yeah? And the instinct is, kill it, because I don't wanna harm this beautiful thing. He's saying, infinitely more frightening than the snake, infinitely more frightening than getting wet, is what this body makes you do to other things on the planet to protect it. <laughs> if you're going to be scared of anything, be scared of this thing you're walking in. It's forcing 99.9% .9 of your time to do non-virtues. Not because someone decided, but because if you saw yourself smash a snake over the head in order to protect your body, you must get the result of smashing a being over the head. If you're going to get hoard stuff for this little body so the other bodies don't get it, if you're going to try and get that promotion over other bodies, if you're going to try and get that lover over other bodies, you're collecting non-virtue, meaning you're collecting imprints in your mind that must necessarily ripen into your reality. And we're so locked into this thing, we're walking in it, that we don't see it. So if I, but if I keep the umbrella because I want to be dry, <coughs> So that I can better help people? Of course. That and he'll, he'll get, of course he does. Okay. Of course he does. He'll get to that. But the essence is what will serve one or seven billion people? Does an Allison with wisdom and knowledge and insight and capacity and voice and health, is that a good thing for the seven billion people? A dry, a dry Allison? Yeah. You know, is that a good thing or is a shabby, broken down Alison that can't eat out of garbage cans? Yeah. Will other people listen to her? No. Got it. So okay. if your motivation is to protect the body, you're screwed. If your motivation is, can I serve 7 billion people by being a dry Alison? Of course. Okay. And this is what he's urging us to do. Okay. He's saying, t don't think of things self-existently. Analyze them. Don't become stupid Dharma students because someone's teaching you something. <laughs> Wrong. You know, you have to analyze it. You still got to put the practice. You got to go, me, one being, seven billion beings. One being, seven billion beings. This being, having to do whatever tricks it must do to serve seven billion beings, if that's your motivation, if you have to go on a TED stage and be silly and do whatever you need to do and go through stresses to it, bloody do it well. Because that's going to get your point across. That's going to help 7 billion people that are struggling to find happiness in unspeakable shit on this planet. Just doing stupid things to each other to get happy. Yeah. They can't get happy. Mm. Instead, we go to shrinks. Oh, you know, we go to shrinks. They're not making people happy either. They're just keeping us in here. Yeah. It's keeping you in here, thinking that the world is that way. You know, it's created the dilemma of the umbrella, thinking that way. It's not, you have to think for yourselves with wisdom, with information, with perspective. Be the best you can be in the world to serve the seven billion people, because they are you. There's no other seven billion people other than the ones in your mind, the ones you engage with. It's all an illusion, it's Zumba. It's fake. But it functions. So make it function fakely, but perfectly. You can, it, it was produced somehow. Let me go to the last two. I know I'm going to keep you pro till 10, okay? So the next one is um, also another argument to prioritize others for yourself versus yourself. It's number 27. If I use it myself, Thinking of yourself and saying, if I give, what will I have for me, is nothing but demonic. To think of others and to say, if I use this for myself, what will I give, is angel dharma. Can you listen to that again? Can you say that again? Just really listen to it. Yeah. If this, so if these thoughts come into your mind uncontrivedly, right? If they come up in your mind as an impulse, one of them. It, they're saying, and if you see the Tibetan translation, they're saying they are real 3D demons. They are real demons. These thoughts are the man, are demons in your world. 
These other thoughts are Buddha Dharma, are the essence of Dharma, are realized beings in your mind. Yeah? They're saying, literally, they, this is what demons are, these are what angels are. Really, not some fuzzy angels in the sky. The real essence of those two ideas are these thoughts. And if they come into your mind, know what you're dealing with. And the first thought is, sorry, read it again. Thinking of yourself and saying, if I give, what will I have for me is nothing but demonic. To think of others and to say, if I use this for myself, what will I give is angel dharma. Mm. You get it? I've seen Stephen do this. I'm going to show off Stephen. Like he's sitting there and I think it was around food. And it was like, and if I eat it all, what would the other people have? So to have that thought just naturally is angel dharma. It's that thought will free you. To actually sit there and go, oh, I've got eight slices of pizza. I'm going to eat all of them. Yeah? If I give them away, if I've got nine people coming, will there be any pizza for me? Already, downward spiral. You should be thinking, there's eight pieces of pizza. Seven people are coming. Maybe Emily's going to come visit. I'll put it aside for her. And you'll get more pizza. <laughs> like you will, you'll get more pizza. Because <laughs> Emily's bringing two pies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go one more. Now I'm speeding. But if you get a chance, please, read the reading for this class. It is <coughs> magic. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It comes, uh, the holiest words in the whole Bodhisattva Charavatara. If you're going to remember anything, please remember these words. And may they burn in your brain. Yeah. The total amount of happiness that exists in the world has come from wanting to make others happy. The total amount of suffering that exists in the world has come from wanting to make yourself happy. What need is there for many words? The children of the world work for their own sake. The able Buddhas do their labor for the sake of others. Come and see the difference. And he's not being metaphorical. He's saying every suffering that you could ever conceive of is only because of thinking for yourself. Earthquakes, fires, time lapses, whatever the negative thing is, it can only come from cherishing yourself. Every goodness can only ever be produced by wanting to take care, take care of others. And, and he says, I've given you all these other arguments to your stupid conceptions that you're forced to have as a bizarre human creature that you are. But for this one, what words do I need to give you other than that? He's like, come check it out. Humans crawling on each other, over each other on the planet are just looking for their own happiness. They just take care of themselves. And look at the world. This is what it is, unexamined, unexamined. Yeah, and then within that world, Buddhas, enlightened beings, beings free of suffering, beings free of suffering, take care of others. Just watch. Beings free of suffering, take care of others. Beings suffering, take care of themselves. What need do I have for words? And then he says, come see the difference. You try it. I can't show it. I can't force it on you. You try it. He's saying. And so the summary is, You've got Dakshin Yampa, which is the practice of? Exactly the same, right? Exactly the same. My happiness? They want happiness? It's as valid as my happiness. I better help her, yeah? Because it's exactly the same. Happiness is happiness. She's suffering. She's got... Who's helped somebody go through relationship problems whilst you had relationship problems? <laughs> Who's helped someone with depression while you were depressed? <laughs> That's how it works, people. That's how you get over it. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be perfect and they're not going to help me. It's suffering. Kill it. And when you are in the midst of your suffering, your depression, your sadness, your breakup, helping somebody else 
frees you from it, frees you from your own thing, educates you, teaches you things in the most nominal, stupid way. You might go, oh, thank God I'm not like her. You know, <laughs> like in the most stupid way. But she's just taught you something. Yeah. So everyone should come in the coffee meditation. <laughs> I agree, everyone should come in the coffee meditation. So that's the Dakshin Yampa, right? Treat everybody the same. Any suffering, go for it. Dive into it. Solve it. Don't have people depressed around you. Try and help them. Doesn't matter if you're depressed. April 11th. <laughs> same with happiness. People are trying to get happy. Help them. Help them get happy. That's Dakshin Yampa. And then Dakshin Jewa is a little bit more radical. It's a little bit more radical, right? One versus seven billion plus. But you have to use your brain. Yeah? Don't blindly go into it just because. Oh, okay, now I have to suffer. Otherwise, they'll never be happy. Wrong. You have to be healthy, able, <coughs> within your capacity. Keep the umbrella. Yeah? yeah. Let, let me finish. So you've got to think this way. We're reaching the end of the meditation chapter on the Bodhisattva Charavatara, which has nothing to do with how to meditate. It's just what to put your mind on. Once you've learned meditation, he's saying, go out to the forest, bring these things to mind. This is what you should, this is the first thing you have to think of. Other beings. Otherwise you're not getting free. So, a carpenter makes beautiful wood things, yeah? A painter makes beautiful paintings. A musician makes magnificent sounds that carry you through time and space, yeah? A bodhisattva puts happinesses in other people's hearts, removes suffering. That's your job. An artist's job is to create art that moves people. If you're a bodhisattva, if you're a baby bodhisattva in training, if you want to try to remove suffering from your world, the call is remove suffering from your world. Your artistry, your magic in the world is just quietly, secretly, simply remove suffering from other people's hearts. That's your craft implant magnificent little gems in people's and they're little ones they're not like oh, i'm going to do they're little tiny tiny things to the beings in your world the immediate people the annoying aunt the crazy boss the silly cousin whoever is annoying you day to day they're the ones you have to work with and it doesn't have to be a monumental facelift it's just tiny imprints Consistent, tiny imprints, day after day after day after day, growing your capacity, growing your capacity. And then he says, come see the difference. Come see the difference. You know, and I think we should leave it there until next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you for the four-year anniversary. Thank you. It was a nice surprise. Happy yeah. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary. Yes.